My name is Lisa Franks, and sports have always been a huge part of my life. 11:33, will she do it? Yes, a world record. I attended three Paralympic Games and won a few medals along the way until a severe shoulder injury ended my competitive sports career. While I was healing from four shoulder surgeries, I found that I really wanted to be in nature all the time. And the solution for that was van life. For the past three years, I've been living in my wheelchair accessible camper van. I surf, I mountain bike, and take on any other adventure that comes my way. I also like to educate people on what it's like to live this lifestyle with a spinal cord injury. One of the many questions I get asked is what I do for a bathroom in my van. And in today's video, I'm going to answer all your burning questions. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. So I'm currently on the road. I'm traveling from Southern California back up to the Canadian border. Uh, but I stopped to camp for a couple of nights and it's a bit of a cloudy, rainy day here in the Pacific Northwest. So I thought it'd be great to do an informative video. So I get a ton of questions about what I do for a bathroom in the van. And I want to answer those questions for you today. If you're new to the channel, I have lived in my wheelchair accessible camper van for almost three years now. Before I was in the van, I would actually take long car camping trips in my Honda Element. And that gave me a really good idea of the things that I needed in the van and the comforts I could live without. And one of the things I could live without was actually a bathroom. The layout of my van is actually based on my mountain bike, which is under the bed. And so that took up a lot of room and a lot of space in the van. And it didn't leave me room for a real shower or toilet or bathroom. So in today's video, I'm going to share how I managed to live in a van without a full bathroom. Before we get into my van setup and how I manage, I want to give a little bit of education. I have a spinal cord injury and a lot of people just think that with a spinal cord injury, that means my legs are paralyzed. I can't walk. I need a wheelchair. And that's that. But there are a lot of other ways that a spinal cord injury affects my life. I really like the image of an iceberg and the top part you see that, yes, I'm paralyzed and I can't walk and require the use of a wheelchair. But below the surface of the water, there are other things that impact my life. I'm unable to sweat when it's really, really hot out. And when it's really cold, I have difficulty warming my body up again. I get spasms in my legs and also sometimes into my hands. I get nerve pain. Uh, I have to be very, very careful of pressure sores on my skin. There's cardiovascular risks. My breathing is not at full capacity. And it also affects my bladder and bowel. I deal with something called neurogenic bladder and neurogenic bowel. And basically that means they're paralyzed and they can't work in a normal way and they can't empty themselves normally. I used to have a lot of embarrassment and shame around my bladder and bowel issues, but I am so much more open these days and the channel is all about keeping it wheel. So I'm going to lay it all out there for you. Not everybody with a spinal cord injury has these issues. We're all so very different and we all deal with these issues in our own manner. Let's start with the bladder. So neurogenic bladder just basically means that I'm unable to uh, contract or use the regular muscles to empty my bladder because it's also paralyzed. Because I don't have the function to empty my bladder like normal, I have to use something called a catheter. So this is a catheter. It looks a little bit like a fancy straw. This is covered in fluid so that it slides in nicely and doesn't have to be lubricated. And this goes into the urethra, which reaches the bladder and the fluid comes out of this green tip. I also used to have problems with bladder spasms and having a very small bladder capacity. And so the combination of those two would actually sometimes make me have accidents and leak out of my bladder. But about 13 years ago, I had a surgery that was meant to enlarge my bladder. And while I was undergoing that, they also did a procedure called a Mitrofenoff. 
the Mitrofenoff procedure actually made a channel into my abdomen. So I now have a little hole down here that I'm able to insert a catheter through there instead of through the urethra. This has helped tremendously because the bladder augmentation means that I don't ever leak anymore. And now that I can insert my catheter through my abdomen, I can actually go to the bathroom without having to undress and even I can stay right in my wheelchair. Now this is a male catheter, it's extra long. A female catheter is only about that long. I use a male catheter because where I insert it in my abdomen, uh, it's still long enough to reach to a toilet. So I still have that length that I can just drain directly into a toilet. The surgery isn't for everybody, but it absolutely changed my life because bladder incontinence was always a fear that I had when I was traveling, if I was on an airplane or just sitting on a couch with friends. And now I don't have to worry about any of those things. Now let's talk about the bowel and neurogenic bowel is very much like the bladder and I am just unable to empty my bowels on my own. So what that means is that I have to schedule a routine. So a lot of people have to use suppositories or enemas and it could be an hour long process to be able to empty their bowels and they do that maybe every day or every other day. I'm actually able to get by with just some digital stimulation and manual removal. And so what that means is, yeah, I gotta put some gloves on and get up in my business. But the bright side of that is that it does not take as long as if you're using uh, the suppositories or enemas. Now that you know how my bladder and bowel work, how do I manage it with a van and no toilet? Because my bowel care routine is fairly quick, I am able to rely on public washrooms, such as campgrounds, gyms, or sometimes the Walmart even. I schedule it so that I do this procedure every other day, usually in the morning. Hear me out, I actually think it's a benefit to have the neurogenic bladder and bowel because I am very much on a schedule. So I know that I'm not going to be waking up at two in the morning and needing to find a bathroom because I've already got a schedule laid out. I just know that every other morning I should be around a public bathroom. However, I am not always near a accessible bathroom. And so I have come up with methods to manage that in the van. So talking about pee, first method is find a public bathroom. Second method is if I'm not near a public bathroom, or I just don't want to get out of the van because it's raining and cold, I will just pee in the van and into a pee bottle like this. This is just a one liter bottle. Don't worry, this is clean and fresh and new. And when I'm cathing from my wheelchair, I just make sure the pee goes into this. I have about six or seven of these in the van. And then when I am near a public bathroom, I'll just put them in a little backpack and go empty them. Third option I have is a special kind of catheter like this. This is a Speedy Cath Compact. And it's a catheter, but it also has a built-in collection bag. So I open it up, unfold it, and unscrew it. So it has the regular catheter per portion here, but instead of just flowing out, it actually flows into this bag and is all collected in the bag. I will use these if maybe I forgot to empty my pee bottles and I don't have anywhere else to pee in the van. I also use these in situations where I'm biking or kayaking and I need to use a bathroom but I can't find an accessible one. I can just do it right on the bike or in the kayak and it collects the urine. Similar to the pee bottle, I'll just wait until I'm at a public bathroom and then this bag rips off and I can just empty it into the toilet. Okay, I'm up on my bed and I am gonna show you one other option I do have. I don't use this often, but when circumstances are right, it is very, very useful. So running up, along the wall 
of my van and coming out of my windowsill I have this funnel that's actually attached to some hosing. So this funnel is shoved into some tubing which runs down the wall of my van and actually goes through the floor of my van. So I put the tip of my catheter into the funnel and the urine runs out of my van onto the ground. Uh, when it's up in my bed area, I use that in the middle of the night and I can uh, access it when I'm down in the main floor, but I really only use it at nighttime. I use this option sparingly only if, you know, maybe it's raining or I'm on a gravel parking lot or I'm out boondocking on dirt and I know I'll only be staying for a day or two. And I do rinse it out, uh, give it a little flush with some water when I'm done using it so it doesn't smell up. So these methods work great when I'm urban camping, which is probably about seven or eight months out of the year. But I'm often on the road traveling between California and Canada and back, or I'm off boondocking and I'm not near an accessible bathroom. And so I've had to come up with a method to manage that. I used to have a porta potty in my van. It was placed in my bench, which is next to my bed. That bench uh, has multiple uses. It's also actually how I get into bed. It turns into an elevator. Once I transfer onto the bench, the lid rises up to the height of the bed. My bed has to be really high because I store a mountain bike underneath it. The bench has many uses. But for about a year, it stored my porta potty. Funny thing is, in that entire year, I never once used the porta potty because I was always making sure I was near a public bathroom. The problem with the porta potty, too, was that it was very small and very unstable. And so I couldn't just have it sit on the floor and transfer onto it. I'd be scared that I'd be falling off of it quite easily. But I do need something for when I cannot be near a public bathroom, especially if I'm boondocking out in the middle of nowhere. I don't want to have to drive back to a town to find an accessible bathroom. After a full year of carrying a porta potty around that I didn't use once, I finally ditched it and I started using that storage space for other things. A lot of people that boondock or tent camp in the middle of nowhere or live in a van without a proper bathroom poop in a bucket, usually a Home Depot bucket. I thought about that, but the problem with that is that a bucket just is not stable enough for me to sit on and do my business. So the challenge for me was to be able to have a temporary setup with something that is stable. I know other spinal cord injury users uh, actually carry a commode with them or a chair with a hole um, that allows them to do their bowel care routine into a bucket, but I just don't have the storage space for that. I'd have to assemble it every time I pulled it out and I just didn't want to have to deal with that. This was my original setup with the porta potty fitting inside the bench. I'd have to actually remove the porta potty and set it on the floor next to it to be able to use it because the lid of the bench would be in the way. After one year of being on the road and not using my porta potty once, I completely removed it from the bench. Even getting it out when it was completely empty proved to be a bit of a challenge because it was so tightly fit in there. I knew I was making the right decision because I'd never be able to do that when it had anything in it. My new idea for a bathroom where I can do bowel care is to utilize the bench and make that a sturdy place that I can sit on. I wanted the option of using the porta potty to remain, so if I ever did decide to put it back in, it would work, or if down the road, many years from now, I want to sell the van, there's a porta potty in it for other people to use. So with that in mind, I lined up the whole of the porta potty on my bench and decided to make a hole in the bench lid so that I could still use a porta potty underneath the bench. I broke out my trusty jigsaw and began to cut the hole that would line up with the porta potty if it's inside the bench. Using power tools when you use a wheelchair can be a bit odd because 
I am only able to put myself in one or two positions. So at this stage, many people would probably put their knee up on the bench and try to reach around the top of the hole. But for me, I just had to work with being sideways to the bench. Nevertheless, I made steady progress and before long, I had right before me something that was truly starting to resemble a toilet. I sanded down the corners of the hole so it was nice and smooth because I already have enough pains in my ass, I don't need a splinter as well. This is my bench, so when I do need to use this as a toilet, I will just take the seat cushion off. And now I've added an extra piece of plywood on top so I can still sit on it. And there is my toilet. And I've added some of these gel pads just for extra cushion. You can see within there, I have a little portable bucket that collapses. So when I have to use a bathroom, I take this collapsible bucket, I expand it, and that sits within the bench. And I put bags in this, I double line this with bags, and then when I'm done, I wipe this out with Clorox bleach wipes, and then I dispose of the contents of the bag in a garbage can. If I do have to have the contents in my van for a few days, I will put it in an airtight container like a yo old yogurt container or a jar that I've got sitting around and that helps and I haven't had any smells or anything within the van. So that's pretty much a summary of how I manage not having a bathroom in the van. If I had unlimited space in the van, absolutely I would love to have a full bathroom and shower set up in here. But Van life is all about sacrifice and to be able to fit my bike in here and still have room to be able to live and cook, I had to sacrifice on my bathroom. If you want to see somebody who has built a fully accessible shower and bathroom in their camper van, check out a video I did a few months ago of my friend Margaret. She has built a great wheelchair accessible camper van with a dry flush toilet and wheel in shower. I will link that right here. I do believe that because I've had to use a catheter and do bowel care since I was a teenager, that that really helps me and I'm not kind of grossed out by having to, you know, use pee bottles and empty them. It's kind of just something I've been doing since I was a teenager. So again, that's just the benefit of having a spinal cord injury. You're used to uh, managing things like that. I hope this video wasn't boring. I know I wasn't up to some grand adventure, but I really find that sharing this information can help people. And I wish I had some resource like this when I was building my van, instead of just having to figure it out on my own. I also thought it was important to show that, you know, van life isn't just all glam all the time. And to be able to live this lifestyle, I have to, uh, you know, deal with some not so nice things. I do plan on doing another video similar to this that shows how I shower. I do rely on gyms and campgrounds for showering, but oftentimes I'm traveling in between them and I don't want to have to detour to a big city to find a shower. So I have a temporary setup for showering as well. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified when I upload that video. So thanks for tuning into the video today. I hope somebody out there found this useful. I really just laid it all out there and maybe some people learned a few things about spinal cord injury. Uh, but anyways, until next time, everyone, keep it wheel. Well, the sun finally came out, and I'm able to enjoy this beautiful camp spot I'm at. Got lakefront view, mountains in the background. It's still a little crispy in the air, but it's going to warm up as the day goes on. But anyways, I'm absolutely curious, after seeing my video and how I manage the bathroom in the van, would you be able to do that? Or would you need a permanent setup and not rough it like I do? I'm absolutely curious, so let me know in the comments. The way I see it, if you're living in home on wheels, you're always going to be dealing with crap. And <laughs> I just happen to do it with pee bottles on a daily basis instead of emptying a black tank a couple times a month, so...
Let me know in the comments if you could do what I do or if that would just gross you out too much.